Hi, my name is Nick Clark. I'm Associate Professor of Human Geography at the University of Southampton, and I want to introduce to you a field trip that I run for third year BA Geography students to Berlin. It's part of a module, the code is JOG 3003, and the title is Berlin Field Course, Politics and Urban Space. I take the field trip every year to Berlin for one week in September. Um, students are given a reading pack over the summer so they can read about the history and the urban politics of Berlin before they arrive in Berlin. In Berlin, the way in which the week works is that we have breakfast lectures every morning. That's followed by site visits and field research that students do in groups during the day with support from members of staff. And in the evening, we have seminars, we have student presentations. After the trip, when we all get back to Southampton, we run a series of advice surgeries where students can get advice on their assessment um, or careers advice related to the kinds of things that we look at in Berlin. And um, then students work independently on their assessments, which are they have to design a proposal to how they would do some research in Berlin and they have to write an essay about urban politics in Berlin. And the overall theme of the field trip is politics and urban space. So I'm just going to take three or four slides to elaborate on that theme for you. What we do in Berlin is to ask the question, how has the city ended up looking, feeling, being like it is today? And we look at the role of different groups of agents in that process of producing the city as we find it today. So on day one, Usually, we look at the role of planners, architects, and urban designers in the city. And we ask the question, how did Berlin get from being a city um, characterised by the architecture in the top two photographs? This was Berlin as the Athens on the spree, the spree of the river that runs through the centre of Berlin. Neoclassical Prussian architecture associated with people like Karl Friedrich Schinkel. How did it get from that kind of architecture to the architecture we see at the bottom of the screen. Bauhaus architecture, arch architecture associated with a architecture school, a very famous architecture school um, located close to Berlin at the beginning, beginning of the 20th century called the Bauhaus, responsible in part for the invention of modern architecture. So that might be day one. In day two, we might look at the role of political ideologies and nation states in the construction of the city. Remember that Berlin as a city was divided during the Cold War between East and West. As a result, Berlin was kind of like an experimental zone for the planning and architecture and urban policies of different political ideologies. Socialism and communism in the East, capitalism and liberalism in the West. And we can walk backwards and forwards across East and West Berlin today and see the differences that political ideology and the nation state can make to a city. Another theme that we look at during the week is memory in the city. Berlin has a very interesting and often incredibly violent and traumatic history. Since the end of the Cold War, during the 1990s and the early 2000s, Berlin has taken very seriously the idea that its history and that trauma should be memorialised somehow in the landscape of Berlin. So on the left in this slide, we have the Jewish Museum, and on the right, the Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe, otherwise known colloquially as the Holocaust Memorial. And one of the things we'll think about on the field trip is how one might use architecture, um, sculpture, public art, in order to communicate um, certain ideas about history and memorialization in the city. The final thing, theme I briefly just want to mention is a theme that's been very important in Berlin over the last couple of decades since the end of the Cold War, which is the role of private, often international investment capital in property development in the city. We've seen areas like Platz on the top left of the slide um, developed in the last couple of decades. The picture on the right of the slide is an interior space within Platz. Often these new spaces 
produced in Berlin are privately owned, but in some respects they are designed as public space for the inhabitants of Berlin. And so one of the things we're able to do um, through the example of places like Potsdamer Platz is think about the role of public space in the city and how some of the ideas of public space and what it should do might be changing because of how property development works in the city in the 21st century. So let me just finish by emphasising some of the things students seem to like about this field trip. They like the structure that students do readings first over the summer and then arrive in Berlin really knowing a lot about Berlin's history and some of the urban political theory that we're going to be working with. They like then having the mixture of lectures, site visits, group work and seminars and so on during the week. They like working in student groups that we mix up every day to make sure that by the end of the week all of the students know everyone and have made lots of new friends. They like the contact they get with staff during the week. We're there for an entire week. Students and staff mingle, chat, um, provide advice, learn together, produce research together over the course of that week. Students like the focus on research design. We do a lot of work on how to design good, rigorous, high quality research during the week, which students then find very useful when they get back to Southampton and do their dissertation through the first part of year three of their degree programmes. Students like the presentation practice. Um, students will do presentations most nights in Berlin. If they're nervous at the beginning of the week, they tend to be confident by the end of the week and that stands them in really good stead for things like job interviews and so on. And then finally, students like the intense learning experience of a field trip where a huge amount of teaching and learning is crammed into a week. We work incredibly hard during the week. We have lots of fun during the week and students get to focus on just one thing and learn a huge amount about it during the week. So. I hope that gives you an insight into the Berlin Field Course at the University of Southampton and maybe I'll see you on that trip sometime in the future.